This is the first section on chapter one, complex numbers in the core year two book. And uh, we're going to be looking at how we can write complex numbers in an exponential form using E. Now, um, up here is Euler's relation here. Now, if we just times both sides by R, then basically what we got is R e to the i theta equals r cos theta plus i sin theta. And we're already used to seeing complex numbers written in this form. We can now write them in this form, where this is going to be the modulus of the complex number and this is going to be the argument of a complex number okay and what's useful about writing it in this form is when you've got uh, an exponential or something to a power you can use the rules of powers for example to multiply things together so you can do something like this you can divide things so um we can use the rules of powers to help us uh, simplify expressions um, for example but there's an advantage to writing it in in that form okay so okay so in this one here uh we're going to write in exponential form a is easy because r is just root 2 it's there and the argument is pi over 10 so i can just put those straight in to my exponential form root 2 e to the i pi over 10 um, you can put the i in front or after it's up to you i've put it in front but you can put the i after as well b now uh, with b for it to be in the correct form uh, this needs to be a plus sign so we're going to use um, our identities for sine and cos to change that to a plus sign so we know that if i have um sine of minus theta that's equal to minus sine theta and if i have cos of negative theta it's the same as cos theta so i'm going to use those to help me so uh, first of all um i can't have the minus sign it needs to be a plus sign so i can use the first identity so if i change that to a plus then the argument becomes negative but the two arguments have to be the same kind of a positive one and a negative one so the next step would be to use uh, the identity to change the first argument so this is using the second identity we get this it's now in the correct form so r is 5 uh, the argument is negative pi over 8 so final answer it's going to be 5e to the minus i pi over 8 so we've now got that in the correct format okay so let's have a look at another one so if we're going to write this uh, in this form we need to find r and we need to find the argument so always draw out complex numbers in a argon diagram so we're going two across and three down like this so our complex numbers there 
So that's where I'm going to find my argument. So um, let's start by finding R. That'd be just Pythagoras. So that's 4 plus 9. So that's root 13. And um, for our modulus, sorry, our argument, I'm do the tan inverse. Now you can also write arc tan because we are dealing with radians and our argument has to be in this range, just like uh, arc tan is. So you could write arc tan instead. And um, it needs to be the tan inverse of the opposite over the adjacent. So it's going to be 3 over 2. And uh, when I get that, I'll get, um, let's just quickly do that on the calculator. So tan inverse 3 over 2. And I get 0.9. Two seven nine. Blah, blah, blah. I'm gonna do it to three significant figures, but because we're going around this way, the argument's negative. So minus or negative 0 0.983 to three significant figures. So now we can write it in that form. R is root 13. So root 13 e to the i my negative i times by 0.983 so that's the second one done okay um, we've got complex number written in exponential form we want to convert it to x plus i y so um, from the argument and the um, modulus we're going to convert it back so I can there's two ways of doing it. So I could draw an icon diagram like this and say, right, well, I've got an argument of um, 3 quarter pi. So um, that would be something like this. So that's 3 pi over 4 in radians. And this is root 2. So I could use sort of trigonometry uh, uh, to work out what um, uh, the real part and the imaginary part is. Probably an easier way is to write the complex number in this form and then just multiply it out. So cos 3 pi over 4 plus i sine. 3 pi over 4. This is probably easier to do. So if I work out cos of uh, 3 pi over 4, I get uh, negative root 2 over 2. Let's times that by root 2. And I get negative 1. And if I work out the sine of 3 pi over 4 and I times that by root 2 I get 1 so it's negative 1 plus 1 or 1 i yeah so that might be easier to work it out just to write it in this form here then multiply it out it's easier than maybe doing it that way okay here's another one um, this looks easy enough. Express that in the form r cos theta plus i sine theta. The only issue we have is this argument is not in the range argument, not in range. When you've got an argument that's not in the range, if it's negative, you keep adding 2 pi until it is in the range. If it is too big, you keep taking away 2 pi, so we've got 23 pi over 5. Okay, let's take off 2 pi. See what we get 23 over 5 
take away 2, and you get 13 over 5. Okay, it's still too big, so we'll take off another 2 pi. And I'm left with 3 pi over 5. Okay, that's now in the right range. Uh, the modulus is fine, that's just 2. So now I can just write down uh, 2 cos 3 pi over 5 plus i sine 3 pi over 5. Yeah, so we were just working out what the equivalent argument is in the right size. Uh, this one here, right, so we've got got this statement already. And you want to show that this statement here is true. Now you'll notice in this statement there is no sine theta. So we probably want to start with this and see if we can write some sort of statement out where we can actually um, subtract the um, sine part from it. And I also notice that I see this here. So I've got this, but this, yeah, that's um, it's probably give me a hint. So let's work out what e to the negative i theta is. Well, what that means is is your arguments are going to be negative. So cos negative theta plus i sine negative theta. Uh, we're going to use our identities again. So sine negative theta is equal to negative sine theta and cos negative theta is equal to cos theta. So we're going to use those and see what we get. So um, the minus or the negative in here can move to the front. So negative i sine theta. And this will become cos theta. Right, okay, this is looking uh, promising. So I've got that. Let me subtract. Um, oh no, let me add e to the negative i theta, which is cos theta minus i sine theta. So if I add those two together, I will get e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta equals 2 cos theta. The signs cancel out and I'm pretty much on the last step now. Just divide both sides by 2. Cos theta equals half e to the i theta plus e to the negative i theta. You'll see that this comes up um, again later on, this, this identity here um, in one of the later sections. Okay, we should now be able to do exercise 1A on page 5. Now would be a good opportunity to introduce you to Euler's identity. Amazing little expression, equation e to the i pi plus 1 equals 0. Five numbers in maths, really important numbers. e, the exponential, i, complex numbers, pi, 1 and 0, really important numbers. Now, why is that? Okay, let's draw an argon diagram. This here is going to be a complex number with modulus 1 and argument pi. Now if I draw that on an argon diagram that is going to be going like this to negative 1 and what happens when you add 1 to negative 1 you get 0. So e to the i pi is actually the number negative 1. So e to the i pi is negative 1. What about that? Worth investigating.